still closer to looking like a nice car again. One small step. This is me watching videos on how to install NV steering wheels in a Miata. And this is me watching videos on how to clean leather because our NV steering wheel is ready to go, but it's crusty. This might look like the leather is torn, but it's actually, look at that. It's actually just a layer of dirt that comes off and then you get the shiny leather underneath. You have to be very careful when you scrub it. Don't use anything too abrasive. We're just gonna use some soap and the soft side of a sponge and we're gonna see how that works. Two quick adjustments, uh, modifications, if you will, that you need to make to this airbag and the other to the clock spring so you can have your NV wheel and your NA. And people just breeze over this. You know, a lot of people go, oh, I'm gonna have a resistor in here. I'm gonna, you know, make sure that I bypass the airbag because it's not gonna save my life in an accident. Yeah, something's better than nothing, I suppose. Um, the connectors are different on the airbag. Oh, side note, this little string here, it's awesome the way they have it. It's mounted to this little tab right there. So when I pulled the airbag out, it just sort of held itself by the string. It didn't put any weight or pressure on the connector. I thought that was a really great trick. It seems like on the uh, others one, they don't really have the same thing. But thanks Mazda, appreciate that. So we cut this connector. You know, this is our OEM style that is going to our clock spring. And we also cut on the other airbag, you can see here. We cut off this, this is now trash. And we will put this away. Make sure you always store these face up so they don't shoot themselves off into the sky. I am nervous to solder these, but you know, heat is one thing, electrical current is another. So uh, fingers crossed that we have no issues on that. I've never heard of a story of an airbag deploying on somebody while they're working on it, but basically, we solder these two together. We make sure that the length is matching the OEM length. You don't want to overdo it. The other thing is the horn. I have cut the connector for the horn and just simple splice in here. It's a really, really small wire. So I used heat shrink after soldering it because I don't really like those butt connectors very much. Um, the heat shrink, after you get it warm, you can just pinch it closed in some of the areas where it is a bit smaller, but this is our NA connector and our NB wire mount. There's really no way that you can modify it. You don't want to re-rivet that, so we have this. It's a bit of extra length, but I think it'll be quite all right. And the wires are gonna go through this bottom passage. The other thing to do, mark on your clock spring, bloop, bloop, because those are on the 12 and six position, and here they're into the three and nine position. So that's the second thing to do. And this is the connector here for the NB horn, also trash. And you're marking the clock spring location on the clock spring itself is that when you stick this wheel on there, the little paint marks or whatever you use, some people use grease or lipstick, will mark respectively there so you can know your distance and just grab a drill bit, whatever fits in here, and then those will just, uh, will drill those holes in there. Of course, you wanna take a chisel and just dimple it here and here. And the cleaning, I brushed the whole thing. I couldn't seem to get rid of this top part here, the way that it's got that, that layer, I have no idea what it is. I also had this question, and you may too, but well, now that I've, I'm here, I can figure it out. The polarity of these does not matter. They're both just solid red wires on both the NA and the NB. So that tells me that it really doesn't matter if you, you know, attach it one way or the other. So that's a very good thing to know because it's just gonna simply send power through it and then it'll ground somewhere in the uh, ECU or however else these systems work. But yeah, I definitely feel good having this in place. I don't wanna be dealing with airbag codes and I don't wanna be dealing with a inactive airbag like I have on other cars. And then look at this here, a bit of the rust that's showing through on the backside of the steering wheel where it's getting baked by the sun. So we're gonna use a ton of the sealer here uh, to make sure that we're protecting this from the sun because it does get toasty a bit. There's a few dimples and scratches and things, but I can't figure out what this, this layer is. It's almost like a layer of paint or dye. It blends seamlessly in with the rest of it. So I'm not sure if it's just grime from people's hands or if it is actually some sort of top coat that I'm peeling off the leather. I don't think leather does that, but I scrubbed it and I scrubbed it and I scrubbed it and a few spots did get better, I think, by opinion. I'm not sure how to define better, but it seems like it's, yeah, it's largely not improved and I don't want to keep picking at it. It's like a scab, you know, I don't want it to have a scar from scabbing. This is pretty much trash now and let's see, is there a weight difference? I don't know, they both feel identical in weight. This is probably just a few grams, if a pound difference at most, or even a kilogram difference at most. It's mostly for the look because this is a sweet, nardy wheel made in Italia.
And then my favorite little bit here to make me feel very fancy. Because in these old Volvos here, Nardi wheels are very hard to come by. So it just kind of makes me feel a little bit better. Makes me feel a little classier. Look at that nice square in the bottom there and this nice square plug here. It looks like everything's gonna line up pretty well. We're gonna mark this with some paint. I got this window car marker crap and just put a dab there on the top and a dab there on the bottom. Stick this there before it dries. I'm gonna need two hands for this so you can figure it out. Just go bloop, pull it out and see where your spots are. Well, there you've got I'm pretty much right on the end of those points. Also, a really good time to clean anything while you're in here. Didn't even realize that I had a cigarette lighter there for a long time. Here is bolt, there is hole. This hole very deep, too deep, but still surface, very nice, very good. This hole not so deep. Each hole is still good. Go half inch, maybe less. Oh, I got nervous because Torque specs are 29 to 36 foot pounds for these nuts, I'm told. Uh, it's 90 degrees past where it was. You can see the marks on the bolt that I put there and it was up top. So it's 90 degrees tighter either, either because this surface is a little bit thinner or just a bit of stretch in the bolt. But I got nervous because, you know, these torque wrenches, unless it's $200, how much can you really depend on them? How nervous am I that this airbag is not going to deploy? Only this much. I'm gonna sit in the passenger seat. I'm gonna have these in. Probably don't even need it on right now, to be honest. Three, two, one. Ah, nothing happened. Okay, now we gotta start the car. I'm treating it like it's a live grenade. Airbag lights off, not blinking, and the final check for the horn. Very nice. It's 11.30 at night, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push it. Boy, oh boy, does that look good, and it certainly feels good. Just like how your cowl piece is always gonna be missing up front, these boots are usually always torn and it's ugly in here. So I got a new one, about 25 bucks on Amazon. That's about the same price everywhere else. You can get up to really expensive ones, but basically that's just there to insulate some of the heat and sound and all that good stuff that comes out of your tunnel. And I think there's actually grease that goes in, goes up into the shift linkage. As we remove the three little bolts in there, once I take this off, then we'll be able to see exactly what's going on. There's also this ugly, ugly, ugly insulation. Oh, it's hideous. After that's put in, I've got a new shift boot, this thing, and one of these stupid fancy knobs. Oh yeah, it's full of fluid. Not very deep, but it's pretty ugly. It's pretty dirty and I'm gonna drain it, which you can't drain it. I'm gonna use the suction method and pull it out. I actually just got one of these bottles from the hair supply place. about 100 milliliters, so I'm gonna refill it, drain it out again, because it's way dirty in there, and then pour in the final nice clean fluid, and that should have a good clean shifter. Our shifter itself here, it looks like up here where my finger is, is the old rubber boot that was uh, torn, you know, that old thing that we're replacing. Um, beside that, uh, we're gonna clean this up and just kind of get an idea of how it seals, if at all and where. If you overfill it, it'll just come out the top, and it turns out that this little rubber piece is just part of this. It's a separate thing. I didn't order it. I'm gonna makeshift something else. So let's check back in in a few minutes and we'll see what I've come up with. Just 
headlights go up? No, but I have a light bar. Somebody get up on this. The steering wheel is bent upward. Both airbags deployed. So this thing sways a lot and I don't like taking turns with it because of that amount of sway. So today we're gonna put in these sway bars. Also gonna install the lowering springs, also by Eibach, but we're gonna basically lower the car. So next time you see her, she's gonna be pretty low, pretty stiff on the corners, and I did scrape today on something, so you gotta keep that in mind when you go low with a Miata. I know I'm doing this all wrong, it's on the driveway. 24 and a half inches to the bottom of the fender flare, and the top of the tire sits at right at 22 and a half. We have about two inches of clearance on the front. At the rear, we're also at 24 and three quarters. The tire is at 22 and three quarters. That's about two inches of play as well. Days are getting shorter. We have two and a half hours left of sun in the sky and then it's dusk. So let's see how quickly we can make box one of two disappear as well as box two of two. much difference in size, but all the difference in compression. Looking at all of our springs here, you see the NA on the left, our I box in the second to left, and the two on the right are both the NB springs. Check out the orientation of these guys down here too. You see there's a lot more components on these two for the NB in terms of all the rubber that they have. You get a damper, the top hat, a damper, spring, rubber insulator, cap, boot, bump stop. On the NA, you got this thing. And somewhere in there is a galvanized piece of rubber. Bump stop. And the boot, of course. Looks like the NB is finally, you know, they're engineering a better option, and that's great. And the Eibach springs, I wish they were shorter because I wouldn't have to compress them as much and to be faster, but Soren came to save the day with a battery because Mom Wayne just decided to crap out today. Way to go. Can you tell I'm discouraged. Somebody already put polyurethane in the OEM ones. They are just under two centimeters, which is three quarters of an inch. The stock NB sway bars are uh, seven eighths of an inch. Here you can see the difference. NA, NB. And now what I've got, just about one inch. And that's 2.56 centimeters. Compare that to the original and compare that to the NB stock. It's a good improvement on both. It's hefty. Kit 5530.310 for 99 to 01. <laughs> yeah, right. They give you this nice little hem joint here. You get eight of these because you need to space out either side of it, I assume. And new hardware. We'll start with the top. Very cool little thing here. You can just turn it one way and it'll space it out, and turn it the other way and it'll go in. So you don't need to worry about individual rotation, per se. And from here, you don't want the bolt. The bolt's gonna go this way. It's not going to go that way, because if it goes that way, it'll hit here on full turns this way. See, it gets really close. Take a look. Cool. We are 
target is as follows. We want to make sure that these have the same range of motion, meaning one doesn't bottom out, like the bottom one doesn't bottom out before the top one does. I think it was 35 degrees or something like that. Our goal for the bar is to get it to be about as level as we can with the suspension and with the car. It looks like this side's too high right now because it's getting pretty close to that upper control arm and you don't want to get it too far over. What I'm gonna do now is just tighten this up. The camera is low, but if I get over here to the side, I can see that it's just maybe a hair above level. So let me go ahead and lower that side and then we'll check the other side. Real nice, you can just do it with your hands. I'm twisting the end link here so that it's in one full lock to match it with the other side and then I'm gonna tighten it. Oh, sorry, yeah, you're in my way. It's locked and it's tight, but you should still have play in it for the bearings. You don't want them too loaded so that they're not actually able to spin freely or twist freely, whatever the term is. Let's go for a drive and then I'll give you notes tomorrow on what I think this looks like and how I think it handles. The springs need to settle a little bit. There's a slight twist in the rotation that will probably adjust itself over time or not, we'll see. It's dark, it's 8 a.m., huh, 8 p.m. So three hours it took to, probably like one and a half of those was just doing one side of the stink in front. It's like that learning curve, you know, you start off, it takes forever to do one, and the second one's like cake, because you already figured out all the tips and tricks from the first. Time for a test drive. So, three hours, front lowering springs. I'm sorry, it's uselessly dark. And the front sway bar, which is huge. Almost two inches lower, I think. Top of the tire is 22 and a quarter. And 22 and three quarters, just about, is the fender, or seven eighths. See how much taller these are? That's because I put the front springs on the rear and the rear springs on the front. I've only got three hours to fix everything. Gotta go by. Two hundred and five pound spring right in the front, one hundred and forty in the rear. The rears are taller springs, but they're skinnier coils fronts are the shorter, fatter ones. Man, oh man, I love this car because it's easy to work on. Hope all the neighborhood heard that. All right. Let's see our new front drop. So we know what it is with the rear springs on the front. Now we're at uh, just under 23 inches. The tire stops at 22 and a quarter and 23 and one eighth is our top height. Should be a 1.3 inch drop all around according to IBOC. Tire ends at 22 and a half, three quarters and the fender flare starts, I'm looking at the inside ridge because that's the bigger one, at 24.6. Uh, all right, let's take a look from the distance so you guys can see what wonkiness I'm getting at here. You see that rake? Gap? No gap. Yeah, wonder what all that's about. A little bit of a gap in the rear. Never stopped anybody, maybe it'll settle down over time. Once you sit inside or so. First impressions with the Eibach Springs is that they're excellent and the sway bars are nice. The car went from having uh, understeer to now it's gonna have a, probably a good amount of oversteer. There's a reason Miata owners are the happiest people on earth. Just putting in those lowering springs and the sway bars from Eibach has transformed the feel of this car tremendously. So now I'm on my way to the theater and I'm gonna show it to a whole bunch of people who don't care about cars. Yeah, noise. It's the draw bearing, I think. Yeah. Okay.